Today we have a passage that is really easy to understand, really practical, and hard to apply. The God of the poor. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 20 through 21. These two verses, I believe, go together. Now, see if you can find the connection. The poor is disliked even by his neighbor, but the rich have many friends. Whoever despises his neighbor is a sinner, though. But blessed is he who is generous to the poor. I think this is a passage that hits very close to home for us. We are called the house. This is, in a sense, the place that we are trying to live out our identity as home. And all around us, we have people who are less fortunate. We have people, especially on the street, right, right here, you know, we have people living in, um, in these trailers. And, uh, and our neighbor right here, for the, for the moment, <laughs> our momentary neighbor, Rob, he has this generator <laughs> that's very loud. <laughs> and so I approached him, and I didn't know what kind of guy I was going to meet. And I said, hey, uh, how you doing? Good. What's your name? Rob. Uh, hi, Rob. <laughs> I'm the pastor here at this church. And, uh, and I need to ask you, could you, and I don't know how long you plan on staying here. Well, I'm not sure. Um, I need to ask you about the generator. You know, we're going to have service on Sunday, and on the Lord's Day. And, uh, and if you could shut it down, I'll sh- shut it down. No problem. He's the nicest guy. Um, and sure enough, when he came around Lord's Day, that, that generator was shut off. But it's still very loud. <laughs> right now it's going on outside. I can hear it. So, anyway. So it's very close to home, doesn't it? And we have to, I think, start with our heart. Because the Bible says it very cl- plainly. Whoever despises his neighbor, and it says in the verse 21, 20, you know, 21, whoever despises his neighbor is a sinner. And verse 20, the poor is disliked. Or the poor is uh, despised. The poor are uh, despised. So put two and two together. Yeah, we have to guard our hearts and lean them toward generosity. Blessed is he who is generous to the poor. Now, those two thoughts. We see the poor. We see the impoverished. And when I think of the poor and impoverished, I don't see anyone more poor and impoverished than Jesus hanging without even clothes on his back, thirsting, not only for physical water, but for the very presence of God. As he quotes scripture and cries out, I thirst. When we think of the poor, let's think of Jesus, who really was by choice, a homeless person that didn't have a place to lay his head, he said. So let's remember that when we are tempted to despise the poor, that Jesus was poor. And he came for the poor. He came to save the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Remember, you were poor. I was poor. I would be poor were it not for Jesus. It's in the very core of our being, then, that Jesus fills us with his wealth. And we are filled now. We are rich now. I'm not talking about physical riches now. I'm talking about riches that matter. Riches that matter from the inside out, as I will talk about tomorrow. Riches that this world cannot touch. Jesus has poured it out on us. And yes, we are. We are right now rich beyond compare. But don't forget the poverty from which we came. And don't forget that even in this moment, we lean and we lean on God's generosity and we need him to fill us. We leak our riches every day. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. Let us always be poor in spirit, wanting more of his presence through his Holy Spirit. Let us also identify with Jesus in loving the poor. What will that look like? I know what it looks like right now. As you, many of you, continue to pray and continue to ask about ways that we can minister to our neighbors. I know how, what it looks like, like right now for, for what we can do in having a food pantry and providing for our neighbors, becoming a channel of blessing to our neighbors. But what more might God call us to do? How uncomfortable might it become? This is, an, this is an uncomfortable message, and rightly so. As the Lord leads us more and more to walk in his footsteps of, remi of reminding us of our identity in the one who became poor for us, and reminding us of sharing his heart in loving the poor like us. Let's do it by his amazing grace. We all live in this place filled with brokenness and hurt. We are all desperately in need, every one of us. I mean, seriously, if you think about it, how, if you amass riches, how much can you really amass? Everything is just right here, that's it. In the light of eternity, what is all of that? Not much difference at all. We all endure all of these struggles in this life, and all of us are in need of true riches and that's the presence of Jesus. Let's sing the song with that meaning behind it. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family, I can hear the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm, you remain in control in the middle of the war. surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I picture slowly fade away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my
we share the same plight of poverty as everyone on this earth. So help us to express your generosity, starting with a generous heart, your heart, the heart you had for us and the heart you have for us now. And Lord, teach us, guide us. We want to yield to you in what we must do to express that heart, the God of the poor. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.